Uh, my name is Matt Herb. I'm an architect here in town with ESA. Uh, when I'm not practicing architecture, I'm probably making jewelry, uh, which is what I'm going to talk about tonight. I'm going to show you a couple pieces, and if you want to throw the first one up. The ring in the lower right-hand corner, I'm going to walk through how I built that. Um, a word on the design on that, that was for a colleague's wife. Uh, she has two small children, and the stones in that represent their birth months. And also, the one-year-old is the garnet, and the two-year-old has the pearls. Uh, she's also a school teacher, so I had to make it a little more uh, durable, and we didn't ha have any prongs in it to get caught up in her daily life. Uh, the first thing I did was pick the stone size, which uh, dictated the width of the band. Uh, we took a ring size, and I found a good gauge, which is 14 gauge, which is going to be hefty enough to hold the ring, or rather the stone. So I measure all that out, uh, scribe it with the, uh, the pointers there, and then the next step is to uh, start cutting it here on the bench. Uh, the jeweler saw those thin little blades, they keep breaking, but uh, if you keep them oiled, they'll, they'll cut for you. Um, so after I cut that guy out, uh, you got to file it up, square it up a little bit, and then we'll take it over um, to the uh, forming jig that I have, you'll see in a second. I used to have a sledgehammer and a vise, which kind of sucked, because uh, there's a lot of cleanup to do. So I bought this guy from Pepe, and uh, it works pretty well. Uh, you, the thing I learned, though, is um, you can't just throw this in there and start bending it. You have to actually cushion it with some copper and some oil. Otherwise, the actual silver blank will get all marred from the steel. So uh, that's uh, the copper and the silver you see there. Um, so I bend that up for a while. There it is, roughly formed. This silver guy here is called a mandrel and you kind of form it up on the mandrel with the uh, rawhide uh, mallet there. You kind of want to get it into a rough shape of a, a ring there. Um, the big thing with soldering is that joint that's open right there, the next slide you'll see it's closed up. And with soldering, everything has to be precise. The metals have to touch. Solder won't fill gaps, so you have to have it really tight like that. You can't see light through it. So you fill the gaps in, and then you solder it, and you'll see the, the torch in the next one. There's the bezel with the stone and that little squirrely wire back there is um, uh, pure silver bezel wire, and you just form those up to uh, set the stones and the pearls in them. Here's the torch. Uh, don't tell my insurance agent. There's the torch, and um, the, uh, the first bezel I'm setting there, uh, it takes a while because you have to form the bottom of the bezel to form the, uh, follow the curve of the ring so everything sits right. But you heat it all up. Silver is very conductive, so the whole ring has to heat up, and then the solder starts to liquefy, and then you take the heat away. There's the main bezel set with the two side bezels ready to go. Uh, and I, started, I think I started filing it there so you can kind of see it's starting to clean up a little bit. Uh, there's some more mandrels and everything. Um, 20 seconds is a long time. So there I am setting the, the two pearls. Uh, the pearls, I have to sand the bottoms of the pearls so they're kind of flat, so they sit against the metal inside the bezel. Otherwise, they'll just spin, and they'll probably pop out. So I sanded them down so they'll stay. Uh, and you can see I'm starting to set them with the rocker there. Um, and it's all about just gently setting those guys in there. Uh, and the last one here, you can see the garnet's already set, and I've started polishing it up. These wheels along the side here are all different calibers of grits, and you use these to polish them up in the... Uh, the um, flex shaft handle over there, you can see it's got a cotton wheel with this uh, buffing powder on it, which puts a really good shine on it there. And the last photo of this ring, you'll see it's in the light box. So these are some of the pearls I used down front, and it's just kind of an art shot I did of it, uh, where I finally finished uh, polishing it and everything. So that ring turned out pretty well, and it's doing very well. So that's it. Uh, some of the next photos are just some pieces I've uh, made over the years. Uh, this first one that you'll see coming up is um, some, a pair of cufflinks I made for a friend of mine. Uh, sterling silver set with a walnut. Um, and the walnut I just uh, finished with a nice sheen of oil. Um, the $2 bill has absolutely nothing to do with them. It just looked cool to photograph on. So that's, what, that's how that ended up. Um, but the, with these guys, these corners, they're really tough to get the corners right because if you, if you don't, roll them over right, you'll have these little buckles there, so you have to kind of clear the corners out. This one I put in because this is a pair of gold cufflinks I made for myself. And if you look, you can see the bezel is made out of 22 karat gold, so you can see how yellow it is. But the actual toggle on the back, the torpedo, is 14 karat gold. I didn't want to pay for a 22 karat toggle, so I just put the 22 on the front for that luscious gold. This is a woman's anniversary ring I made. Um, and the concept behind this is every year they're married, one of the black diamonds is removed and one of the white diamond is inserted. Um, and so it's a, there's 19 stones there, so it's going to have a lot of memories and a, a lot of uh, association with it. So that was kind of, that was fun to make. I made that about a month ago. Uh, this is, I cannot remember the name of the bird. It's, I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it a peacock pheasant. Why not? 
Uh, my wife's part Native American, and she was making some jewelry one weekend, and that inspired me. So I had some of these from a fly tying course I took, and I made this little silver lapel pin bottom, and you stick it in, and you put it on your jacket or whatnot. Uh, it looks pretty cool. This is a men's anniversary ring I made. It's um, white gold with a diamond, and I cast that. I carved it out of wax. The guy that I made this for, he was really big into motocross and working on his bike. So I took the, the knurling pattern that you see on tool handles as my inspiration. I made that into the ring. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a dangerous looking ring when he wears it. Uh, this is my to die for collection. These are the ends of bullets. That's a 50 caliber machine gun bullet, and that's a 12 gauge shotgun. Um, I've made them out of all sorts of bullets. These are really popular. I love making them. Uh, it's really funny, though. I go to a um, place where they shell em sell empty brass, and I go in and I tell them I'm making jewelry, and they all kind of stare at me. Um, but they, they sell it to me. Uh, these last three sides represent um, uh, some jewelry. I don't have a really good name for it yet. It's, I kind of call it repurposing or grandma's ring. Um, basically, um, a lot of people come to me with a ring that was their mother's or their aunt's, or it has a lot of sentiment and meaning, but it's not the style they'd wear, but they want to reuse the stone. So these are my grandparents' uh, wedding rings that were cut. Um, instead of just making them back into rings, I turned them into a necklace with a chain from my mother that I gave to my wife. So it was kind of an interesting way to, to bring that jewelry back into circulation, and, and it has a lot of meaning to me and my wife. So that's, uh, that's 18 karat and 14 karat. The last slide is uh, some stack rings I made about three years ago. Uh, this really nice piece of aquamarine was from the, the client, and she had a, a ring as a child, as a, a young girl. And again, it just wasn't a style she was wearing, and obviously it was pretty small on her. So we, uh, we took the stone out, uh, recycled the metal, and we made these, uh, the stack rings out of them, and she wears them every day. Thank you. <laughs>